Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to continue with our portfolio website. And so in the last video, we set up kind of a basic, uh, just our basic front end set up and everything looks good from a desktop view. But if we go to a mobile view, it all gets completely messed up. So we're going to fix all of this mess and make it look good on mobile. Uh, we're also going to make this nav bar up here work as well. And we're going to have to just scroll to the section. So we click on education, it will scroll down to here. Uh, work experience will scroll to here, etc. And we'll also make this fix so when we scroll down, we still have our nav bar so it doesn't disappear. Um, so we can easily scroll to the different sections. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead back into the mobile view and get started uh, with what we want to do here. Uh, we'll make a mobile nav bar that like has a like a list pop down when we click the little icon, um, but we'll skip that for now. Let's go ahead and focus on this first section um, and we'll work through all these sections then we'll come back to the nav bar. So what we want to do for most of these sections, instead of having the flex box go horizontal here, we're going to stack all the elements uh, on mobile. Um, and so there's different ways we could do this if we jump into our code. We have different uh, inside of Tailwind. We can change our elements so we can do like an MD colon uh, to make this style only appear on medium and above screens. We could do SM to make all of the styles appear on small and, and extra small screens. And so we can kind of pick and choose how we want to do this to set our styles up. I'm going to set everything that is for mobile with without any sort of, of size on it and everything that only needs to be on larger screens. Like for example, making things go um, columns here. So when we're out here having things go in the columns uh, horizontally. Um, I'll use the MD suffix on that or the prefix on that to set up our, our larger screen sizes, if that makes sense. If not, I'll walk through it and hopefully it'll make sense then. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So the first things first, Let's go down to this main section here. So we have H dash screen, and then we have our widths right here. So I'm gonna change this to be medium. So I don't want this to be a full screen width on small screens. And for our width here, we'll set this two fourths to medium as well. And then for smaller screens, um, we'll do a width dash 10 slash 12. So I'm not gonna do any, I'm not gonna put SM here um, because it's not really needed in this case, we, since we put medium here. Um, so we should be able to put just width 10, 12, and that will make our width wider on small screens. Next, let's go ahead and stack things. So what we can do is we can find our flex box here. And on medium screens, MD, we'll do a flex dash row. And on small screens, we do a flex dash call to make it a column. And we'll save that. And now you see it's already starting to look a lot better. Next, we have a width of 2 dash 4 on this div here and this div right here will be our card so our card set to half screen width of course we only want that on medium screens so we'll do md in front of that and there we go now we're looking a whole lot better already let's also add some extra padding um, and this will be useful for when we get to our scroll later so up here on the h dash screen div i'll add a padding 10 or a padding top dash 10 and that should be good from there. Now let's go ahead and move on to our next section. So a lot of this will be the same. We want to put an MD prefix on our HS screen and we want a padding top dash 10 here as well. And that helps the spacing right here. Uh, now let's go ahead and put these um, in columns on small screens. So we'll find our, uh, let's see here, where is it? It's this, so this grid right here. So we have, um, three grid widths that's only on medium and above so we do md colon and then on small screens we can do just a grid dash calls dash one to put them all um, just, just to stack the elements and now everything's stacked just like that and that looks pretty good right there let's go ahead and add some padding here as well so uh, we'll go to the next section and we'll do the same thing so we'll do an md on hs screen and then a padding top dash 10 and actually, let's go ahead and actually change this padding top dash 10 to be 16 to give us a little more spacing. Okay, we can save that, we come back here. That gives us this little bit of extra spacing. I think that looks a little better, um, but you can do what you want there. Let's go ahead and once again, change this now. 
So that will once again, it should be the columns again right here. So we'll do MD on our grid calls three, and then we'll do a grid calls one on anything else, which will be uh, small screens. And there we go. Now the work experience looks a lot better. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for our last section here. So we'll come down to this next session. Once again, MD H dash screen. We'll do a padding top dash 16. And then on our grid columns here, we'll do grid calls three, we'll put an MD prefix on there. Then we'll do a grid calls one uh, for small screens. And then we'll, now we have everything stacked here. Okay, perfect. So now everything looks so much better already. Let's go ahead and work on our nav bar now. So what we want to do is we want to keep the nav bar the same on wide screens here, on bigger screens. We want things going um, horizontally. On small screens, what we want is a little icon, that little hamburger icon with three lines. And when I click that, I want this to come down with our items listed uh, vertically here. So what we can do to make that happen is we can go back to our nav component and we can work on it here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create two separate divs. So we'll have a div here, another div below here, uh, and we'll hide one on large screens and we'll hide one on small screens. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and put a React fragment around here because this component needs one parent element. So we need to have some sort of parent. So these empty tags will give us that parent. Now instead of here, uh, this will be our, um, we'll make this our, uh, our y, our large screen nav bar. So this will be the same as it is now. So we don't need to change this. All we'll need to do is on this div here, we want to add a couple classes. Um, we'll add hidden, so we'll hide it on small screens. And then on medium screens, we'll set it to display block. We'll do a sticky at the top dash zero to make it stick to the top of the screen. So now, um, oh, I completely forgot to put class name and put these inside of there. Let's fix that. Class name equals and put quotes around all of this. Okay. Now let's come back here to our page here. We go on, on wide screens here. Um, everything looks the same. Now when we scroll, it sticks to the top. And that way when we add our scroll to element uh, functions up here into our, our nav, we can still get to the other um, sections with, from our nav bar. It doesn't just go away after we click on one. Okay, perfect. Now that we have that part done, uh, this all should be kind of good as it is. Let's go ahead and create another div down here. And this will be our small screen nav bar. So we'll add a class name, and this will be the opposite. So it's now instead of hidden on small screens, we'll do an MD colon hidden, so we'll hide it on large screens. And on small screens, we'll put a display of block to show it. We'll add our empty or our closing div tag right there. And now instead of here, we want a few different things. Let's add a div first. Um, inside this div, we'll create another div. And this will be our header text inside of this one. Then we want our icon below that. So let's start with our header here. So we'll just put test portfolio like we did for our large screen uh, nav bar. And let's add some classes here. So add a class name equaling uh, margin x dash three, margin y dash four, text dash 2xl um and actually we're just going to just keep the same styles as this one up here so i'm going to go and just copy all of these styles it's going to be exactly the same just copy all that and put that right here instead of having to type it out again save some time with that and now if we come back to our page here it's like we have a typo though let's come back here right here this should be class with a C. Okay. Um, let's refresh the page here. Let's go into our mobile view. And now our nav bar is pretty much gone except for this test portfolio uh, text right here, we, which we just added. So, so far, so good. Let's go ahead and put some classes on this parent div as well. Um, this will give us our background color and everything else we need. So, we'll do a class name equals flex justify between and this will make sense more when we add our icon a width of 100 background color of stone 100 a cursor pointer and a width uh we're good with our width okay and now that that's just add our background color um and add some other styles which we'll need when we add our icon uh, let's go and add the icon now so we will put this inside of our flex box this will go inside of this div right here 
So instead of here, I'm going to use just an SVG to make this icon. So we'll do an SVG and then we'll add some different things here. For now, let's add a class name. We'll add some classes here. We'll add a width dash of eight, height of eight, um, a text of slate 900, margin Y of four, and a margin right of five. And then we'll add a few other things here. I'm not going to go too much in depth on what this is. This is just create the SVG icon. Um, we'll do an X dash show, show menu, a fill equaling none stroke line cap equaling round a stroke line join equaling round a stroke width equaling two a view box This will set this equal to zero space, zero space, 24, 24, a stroke equaling current color. And then we'll set, put the closing tag here for this SVG uh, tag. And then inside of here, we'll add a path. And this will equal D equals um, M4 space. 6H 16M4 12H 16M4 18H16. I think that should be good. Let's close off our path here. And then we also want to close off our SVG. Okay. Let's go ahead and save that now, come back here, and there we go. So now we have the three lines, and when we click this, we want the, the nav items to show down uh, below all of this. So I'm not, if you want more me to go in more detail later on SVG tags and those sorts of things, I can, just let me know. But for this video, just to save time, um, I'm not really going to go into it. It's not really the point of this video. Um, we just need an icon so you can click on an icon. Okay, but now we have the icon. Let's go ahead and add our elements below that so this will go outside of this flexbox div so right down here we want to create another div for the container for this and we'll create another div inside of here um, and we'll put our elements inside of there so this first one up here is we want to toggle this to be hidden if that icon is selected so we'll need to do some different things here um, we'll need to come back to this in a second what we want as we want to use state item that we can handle if it's been clicked or not. So at the top here, we can do a const toggle menu and then set toggle menu. This will be our state item that will uh, handle if we want to show or not show the menu and set the default to false. So we don't want to show the menu. And then we'll create a function to run once we click on the icon. So we'll create this function, I'll call it nav icon handler. So we'll take in E as the event um, for any event handler. And this will be a function. First we'll do e.prevent default. And then we'll do set toggle menu and we'll just toggle it. So not toggle menu, so the opposite of what it currently is. And now let's go ahead and put this event handler on the actual icon. So down here on our SVG itself, we'll add an on click, on click equals, and this will just be nav icon handler. Now inside of this class name here, what we can do is we can put a ternary expression or ternary operator here. So we can do toggle menu, question mark. If that's true, we want to put it as hidden. Um, if not, Actually, if it's true, we want to put it as empty string. If it's false, we want to put it as, oops, we want to put it as hidden. So what we're doing here is we're saying if toggle menu is true, we want to set the class name to nothing so we actually show it. And if it's false, we'll set it to hidden so we don't actually see the menu. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Now with that done, let's go ahead and put our classes on here. 
Um, this will just be setting up our different items. So we'll do a grid. Grid calls one. Text slate 900. Hover. Text slate 700. And then a transition. So this will look the same as the other ones, really. Just like that. And then inside of here, we'll do education. And then we'll close off div. Okay. We'll start with just one. Let's go back and check our project now. Looks like we have an issue here. Um, looks like we have an issue with our divs. Um, let's see here. Might have an extra div or something. Does that fix it? Yes, oh, I forgot to import use state though. So up here at the top, import. Uh, we don't need this React. So instead, we'll do import use state from React. Okay, now we click on this icon, education shows up. And we can toggle it on or off by clicking this button. So, so far, so good. Let's go ahead and add the rest of our items. And then we'll add our styles to make everything look pretty. Oh, you know what? I see the issue. I put all of this as grid columns. Okay, let's fix this. I messed this all up. Okay, sorry about that. This would be a container, and the inside of here, we should put our elements. That's what the issue was. Okay. Yeah, I just I just messed that up. I was wondering why my styles weren't applied. Um, okay, so inside of here, we'll create another div. And we can go ahead and close it off there. Um, and this will be education. Okay, so now on here, we can put our class name equaling mx-3 my-5 text slate 900 hover text slate 700 and a transition okay so we can actually remove some of these styles up here we don't need these um, i skipped the step so let's delete all of these here and instead on here what we want is the bg color stone and we want a cursor pointer and that should be it okay so now if we come back here and we open this up now we have our background color and our styles on the element um, right there and we can toggle on and off with this button okay so that looks good let's go ahead and copy this down for our next elements so we have education we have work experience and we have profile so we'll change this to work experience and we have profile down here or not profile uh portfolio right there and there we go so now we see education work experience profile or portfolio and there we go we see education work experience and portfolio if it's looking good so far uh the last step we want to do today on this project is we want to go ahead and when we click on one of these we wanted to scroll to the element so we click education it'll scroll to my education we click on work experience it'll scroll to work experience um, and actually let's make this sticky as well so um, before we continue so up here we'll grab our sticky top zero and we'll come down here um here i guess should work and now it stays up there that way we still see it when we scroll um okay perfect now let's go ahead and make it scroll by clicking the different elements uh, there's different ways we can do this but to keep it as simple as possible i'm going to use uh use ref and react so if we look at the react uh react documentation Um, let's do use ref and this will give you an idea of what this is um, it's another hook we can use use ref right here so it returns this object where we can use this dot current property and we can use this to scroll to the element so creating the, uh, a ref is the same as creating any other uh, hook in in react so if we use use effect or use state it all works the same way um, we, we create a variable for it and we use use ref instead of use state here. Um, so it works kind of the same way. Um, you can read up on this. I'll put it in the description if you want to uh, 
uh, read more on this. Uh, but it'll make it very easy for us to scroll to whatever element we want to scroll to. And since we have our nav component and we have our elements over here, uh, we need to pass different things in as props. So this gives us good practice on, on uh, passing props into a component and using them as well. So we'll start actually in this app.js file because we need to create everything here and then pass it into our nav component. So the first things first is we want to import use ref from, uh, from uh, React. So we'll do import use ref from React. And then down here, inside of our app, but outside of our return, we can add our different refs. So we'll do a const home ref equals use ref. And our default value can be null. We don't need to set a, or initial value can be null. We don't need to set any initial values. And now we'll copy this down uh, four times, I guess. So one for the education, work, and then portfolio. So education ref, work ref, and portfolio ref. And then we'll take all of these and pass them in, into our nav component. So we'll do a uh, home ref equals home ref uh, education ref equals education ref work ref equals work ref. And then finally portfolio ref equaling portfolio ref like that. Okay, perfect. Now we'll jump into our nav component and we'll use all of these. So uh, if you're not familiar with props, you can access them by typing props up here and then you can do props dot whatever it is. So props dot home ref, props dot education ref, etc. Or we can destructure that. So instead I'm going to destructure it. So we'll put curly braces here and we'll pass in all of the names we pass in here. So home, ed education ref, work ref, uh, lost it, uh, the end portfolio ref. All those names will be passed in right up here. So home ref, education ref, work ref, and portfolio ref. And now we can access and use these different refs uh, inside of our component. So what I want to do is I want to create a on-click function that runs, that actually scrolls the uh, elements. So I'll create that function first. So we'll do a const, we'll call it execute scroll, and it will take in a parameter of ref. And this will be the, whatever ref is that we want to scroll to, and this will be a function. And then we can go ahead and uh, use and scroll to that element. So first we'll do an if statement and we'll do if ref and ref.current. This will save us from having any errors if something's not loaded correctly. Um, it just won't scroll. And then we can do a ref.current dot, and there's a function scroll into view. And we can pass in some different uh, parameters inside of here. So we'll do curly braces, we'll do behavior. This will be smooth. And then we'll do a block of start. And that's all we need to scroll to that ref. Um, so now let's go ahead and put this event handler on all of our different buttons. So in all of these here, we want um, an on click on click this will be a function and we'll do is put an arrow function here and we'll call our, our execute our execute scroll function execute scroll and we'll pass in whatever ref we want and this first one will be home ref like that uh, i'm going to go ahead and copy this down and we'll do it for all of these so this one will go right here and this one will be for our education ref education ref and this one will be for the work ref and this one will be for the portfolio ref then we need the same thing for our uh, mobile navbar as well so we'll come down here and first we have is our test portfolio header here this will be the home ref one and then down here we can do the same for our education work and portfolio, education ref, work ref, and portfolio ref. Okay, great. Now if we save this, we come back here. 
Um, it's still not going to work. Uh, I had a typo, it looks like. Right here, for at the T portfolio ref. Um, it's still not going to work when we come over here, though. We try scrolling, and it doesn't do anything because it doesn't know where to scroll to because we haven't told it yet where to scroll to. So we go back to our app.js now. What we can do is we can put this home ref on any of our elements. So, for example, for this first uh, home section up here on this h screen padding 10, I can add a ref equaling, and we can set the ref to the home ref. And I can do it for all of these. So now on the h screen for the education, I'll set the ref equaling to education ref. And we'll come down to the next h screen. And I'll have to set a ref here equaling to work ref. And then we go down to the portfolio down here, and we'll set the ref equaling to the portfolio ref. Now you see when we click on it, it does scroll to the section um, that we want to go to. And it's a smooth scroll um, that looks uh, pretty nice, at least I think so, um, to scroll to different elements. We can scroll to all of them uh, just like that, and this will scroll us back to the top. So that is all working good now on both mobile and um, on wider screens. And it looks much better now on mobile um, than it did before. Uh, so that's where we'll stop the video for the day. Hopefully that's helpful with figuring out how to create mobile responsive websites with Tailwind. Um, in the next video, we still need to come back and we need to add all of our real data in. And that'll be the last big piece that we need to do before this is ready to go and ready to deploy. Uh, so hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, but other than that, all the code will be description below, as well as any links to any uh, documentation that might be helpful. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.